All right, all right. I want you to meet, you know, Sada. Sada Yelro is a great friend of mine. He took early retirement from IT industry. His company got bought out by Broadcam, Broadcam right, uh, uh, Sada? Uh, and its stock is $1,200. So Sada made millions of dollars. I don't want to say so how many that, millions. That, that I don't know any. So. <laughs> But it's exciting that, you know, Sada and I've done partnerships, you know, David before, and we are meeting every week in Mastermind also, just he and I. He lives only 15 minutes away from me. And not even 15, Sada. You know, we meet at Starbucks and just kind of coming back into lots of great things. Catherine is from Florida, you know, right there, David, uh, near Miami, uh, West Palm, right, Catherine? Yeah, West Palm. Yeah. Yeah, glad to have you. That's great. Braden is there. Brother Braden was sharing how he's put some, you know, uh, LOIs and all. Let's see how many people will show up today. It should be fun. Should be fun. I know there is one person you know definitely from Alchemist Nation. Uh, uh, Miguel. Miguel, I think, is his name, right? Uh, Miguel. So he said that also, Vinny, I would like to join. I know, of course, Brother Steve, Steve should be here. Danny should be here. Ankur, I think he takes his son. Oh, Ankur, right there. He just texted me. Hey, Vinny, sorry for the late response. My boss is in town and I have all day meetings that couldn't move. No worries, no worries. <laughs> no worries. So, you know, we'll be, we are recording it anyway. So we'll just send it to, you know, everybody will post it there on our side. Wife caught COVID, uh, been hectic week. No, no problem. No problem. Uh, that's great. All right. <clears throat> so let's just start it. I think, again, I do want to show the one thing which we always have to do it. Our attorneys ask us to do it. And that is to do the PowerPoint with the, Oh, no, not this one, Vinny. What's going on? Uh oh, okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, recent, it, there it is. Okay, I'm going to share the screen right now. <clears throat> and we'll go over that. Okay, let's just close this up. Okay, I'm there. And I'll just come back here to share the screen. All righty. Okay, all righty. Welcome, welcome, everybody joining the mastermind of Vinny Chopra and brother uh, David uh, Malvani right there from Jacksonville, Florida. I know David has been busy with the uh, flip actually he's doing. Great one. And uh, I'm so glad Dave could join. Welcome to our inner circle mastermind. Hope you're really excited. You are ready to crush it together with us. And uh, we got some really exciting things today. We're going to talk about Again, you know, remember this is inner circle mentoring session that we do every Wednesday. When I'm traveling, Brother David is able to fill in or we miss one or two weeks. Usually, Brother David is there and where we talk about topics of interest in real estate, multifamily, commercial, hotels, senior living, storage units, investing in syndications, car washes, uh, storage units. Uh, you know, marinas, golf courses. I should write all that, Dave, there <laughs> because we have done training on so many things. And today, Brother Stephen is going to talk about vending machines. Oh my gosh, there is fortune to be made in vending machines. And that's what we're going to talk about today, also, along with other case studies. This webinar is for uh, entertainment and educational purposes only. It should not be considered as legal, accounting, or investment advice. This webinar does not represent an offer to sell or solicitation of an offer to purchase or an investment or security, not at all, you know? And then the information presented believed to be accurate and reliable. You know, we use online media and reports and all that, but we make no representation or warranties expressed or implied as to the accuracy of such information. We expressly disclaim any or all liability that may be based on such information or errors or omissions thereof, please consult with your own attorney, financial advisor, and CPA for legal uh, matters, in investments, and specific tax situations. 
I wanted to read the whole thing because my attorney said, Vinny, since your students come every week, you don't have to read it. You could just show this slide and they can read it. But since this is January 24th, <laughs> you know, New Year 2024, I thought it'd be good to, good to do that. Oh, I'm so glad Philip is in, Brother Mike is in. It's going to be a wonderful session today. Again, keep positive thinking, confidence, happiness, enthusiasm, inspiration, belief, uh, motivation. All those things come. You know, we build our energy because we are, you know, more positive thinking people. We accomplish a lot more if we stay positive. And abundance mindset. That's the other thing I like to talk about every single time, every Wednesday. Failure is an opportunity to grow. Never, never, never lie down on the floor, get up, and then we'll be able to accomplish better next time. We learn from mistakes but we can do an abundance mindset is so important. Acknowledging that the good that we bring already have in our life is the foundation for more abundance. The more abundance manifestation we think and goal set and dream, more we will be able to accomplish. So welcome everybody. All right, all right. Let's talk about the wins. And we're going to go right into it. I was able to come into a very big mastermind. I don't know how much they charge. They invited me, I think last week I mentioned it to you, right? Uh, Brian uh, Del Basso, I think, Metrics. And actually, I might be doing some partnerships with Brian now. You know, it's, it's mind boggling. And they meet every week in a mastermind. I think they pay, I don't know, 6,000 a month. Uh, I think in that mastermind, I was invited and they want to uh, let me come there even for free and even talk more and, you know, excite people up about the, you know, uh, money raising and other stuff like that. So anyway, but who would like to talk about their wins? Let's talk about it. Brother Mike, Mike Fritz is here. Brother Mike, tell me what's happening, brother. Yay. What's happening, my friend? How are you doing? Uh, yeah, oh, Vinny is always excited. I don't know. This is my 72. I'll be 72 in August. I'm just getting ready to get just, more energy this year. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, good wins, man. Getting our second manufacturing company off the ground. We got a couple multi deals. We're going under contract on a 96 unit and a 46 unit um, in uh, in Lexington this week. Uh, we'll. <laughs> And so we're getting uh we're actually doing a good uh so one the 96 unit 70% occupied it's right across from 166 unit we own and we're at 98% occupancy and it's a nice building it's just bad total I terrible love it. Oh. And so but because I told him I said I'm just not willing to step into the bridge market right now I said I need yes. you to care I need you to carry the debt for 18 months till I get it stabilized and I can take it to agency and so and he did so um, oh my gosh, that's amazing! What what interest rate? Or are you not? So uh, so here's what I did with him. I said, here's what I'll do. So he has two. So I'm buying it for six million bucks. He has two and a half million dollars on a three point nine five percent interest rate. I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that over while we're in the deal, and I'll pay you six yes. percent interest only on the difference. And so, love it. Love and so it. overall, love it. that's probably a. 4.9% rate on the entire loan amount. Yeah, on the whole know, thing. Maybe five, wow. five. In this market, to be able to control that kind of, you know, asset with that kind of interest rate, that's that's a win, brother. Big win. Yeah, so that Big was that, that was a win. And so now we're just right underwriting the numbers when we go to agency. Will we have to bring more cash or do we think we can lift the property enough to refinance without having to bring in more cash to the table? And so we're under the underwriting stuff right there. But Get, we got vertically integrated this year with our own management. And so it's been, we can cut expenses. And so we're able to come at properties a little different. So, yeah. So exciting stuff, my friend. Mike, can I say, I, I want to give you accolades. I mean, 2020, COVID, your business goes down. And in three years, you are able to accomplish so much. I, That's because of I you, just, brother. No, not me, not me, not me, not me at all. I mean, the, the kind of person you are, I knew when you joined the academy, I knew you're going to move and shake. I knew that, you know, you were so determined to make things happen. And you raised money 
before you even look for the deal. I did. Yeah, that was that was, <laughs> you know, that ended up being a really good strategy, but I'll be transparent. I created that strategy because I was scared to death and not being able to raise the money and getting caught and not being able to close the deal. That's actually why I did that. I did that more out of fear than I did that out of skill. And so uh, I'll uh, I'll scale that back a little bit because I it sounds like, oh, yeah, he had this strategy. No, I just didn't want to get to the closing line and be like, I don't have the money. Um, and yeah. so but that ended up being a good strategy because I was able to to, to build relationships with investors faster. Cause I was able to basically, you know, they always say in marketing, the worst thing to do is create a product, then go find somebody to buy it. You want to find yes. the people that want it already and then create what they want. And that's, that was kind of my mentality. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you did it right, brother. And so and I, you but know, I appreciate you. you. <laughs> and no, uh, that's exactly. And you know, the good part also people till talking to everybody here is that, you know, brother, uh, Mike, now he's buying multifamilies, right? We just heard. But last year, he bought manufacturing facility. He said, Vinny, they are cash flowing better than my multifamily. Way Vinny better. didn't buy anything last year, brother, because <laughs> everybody was on high horses. Everybody, you know, I mean, interest rates, hikes and all that stuff. You know, so so manufacturing properties are giving you great cash flow. You're closing on second one, third one. Huh? Close on second one, working on the third. We have an offer in on the third. We're rewriting the LOI a little bit. And um, but yeah, the, the thing I like about the manufacturing space is um any any place where there's low, and this is it's a it's a kind of a catch-22, but any place where there's low labor, usually there's high demand for the 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 product that they create you look at it sure. there's low labor it tends to be high it's they've either burned through the workforce and they need more 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 that means there's there's product to be made so so if you can fix the employee issue you can you you have a built-in supply so one of the ways to know where money's flowing is look where labor is short and that's what i did and so I found labor was short same way in construction like constru there ain't a construction working in the world right now that's slow they're hard to find mm -hmm. labor. So I just looked at where the labor was short and that meant that there was product to be done or services to be done. And that was true. In the, and that was true in the manufacturing wow. space. So then I and just it's in, with, in the state of uh, Ohio. Or is yeah, it it's, it's Lexington, you, Lexington, yeah. Kentucky. Uh, oh. And then Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, I just bought my second one. And then the other one's up in Indiana, but it's in the, that Midwest. And that yeah, goal is to do a right five, there. five to we'll buy four or five, six of them, and then do a roll up, um, implement like a, system in each one get a manager in each one and then yes. sell it to a conglomerate of some sort fabulous 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 this is so exciting you know the one thing i love what you just said is you fly into one place and then you can take care of so much business in three four five days rather than having one deal here one deal here one deal here one deal here i it's mean so you're true. all over the place isn't so that true. true yeah it is true yeah. but i i i just uh vinny I, I was thinking about you i i would need to connect with you to get on your calendar i'm just launching a new podcast called the passive investing show and uh, i need to have you on it to talk about it to talk hey, about hey i'm now. ready when you are i go for patagonia 21 days trip oh right? do you oh, that's a beautiful yeah next area. friday i leave Patagonia's next friday beautiful. Patagonia is going to be beautiful. My wife and I and brother, sister from Atlanta. So we Love are it. all going there 21 days. And, you know, why do we make money, right? We got to just got to enjoy, enjoy it. You know, like brother Steven says, take more vacations. DMV. I'm following his footsteps. <laughs> so, so what I uh, know, uh, please schedule me. Yeah, any I will. Week, any day, day, just text me. I, I'll, I'll come on it. We can record Love it. it. You know, my Desi Money Show is also getting launched, my another podcast. This is to go after the entrepreneurs of Desi. Desi in Indian language means uh, Indian and Pakistani from my descent. So we are mm. going after 4 million entrepreneurs or something. No, not 4 million. I think to 4 million is population. So there will be maybe 1 million, uh, you know, entrepreneurs who have made really good money and uh, through this podcast, we'll be interviewing uh, people and all that and asking them to invest with us, you know, invest into our fund, which is uh, I I've launched already, you know. So, you yeah, know, that's great. Thank you for sharing and uh, congratulations. Congratulations. All right, wins. Come on. Come on, Philip. What's your win, brother? Tell us. Let's uh, talk about, you know, what's going on. 
And brother Daryl is coming in. Everyone's there we go. Yay. Good to see you, Daryl. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. I haven't had much wins in the real estate space recently. So um, I know. That's I why wonder. I didn't see you in the class yeah. for a good time, brother. Tell me. Yeah. What's yeah, going on? Huh? I mean, it's I haven't been able to find anything to purchase. So there is sure, that. Sure. And then um we're still we're we're more or less stabilized on the 16 unit we bought like two years ago. Um yeah. we're just trying to sell it, but there's no okay. There's no buyers for the price point that we're looking for, and so. Okay, okay. Um, is this one in Portland then, or where? Yeah, it's is in this? Eugene. It's in Eugene. Eugene, Oregon. Eugene, Oregon. Yeah, I've been there, yeah. brother. Yeah, yeah. I, I know exactly yeah. where that is. Yeah. yeah oh, so, okay. You know. Yeah. Right now we're just no uh, holding it. Um, our loan is due in. Well, our loan has a five-year extension after 2026, but it'll be readjusting its interest rate in 2026. Okay. So okay. I think the time. Uh, what's is the interest rate now? What's the interest rate now? Uh, I think it's three point. Hold on, hey, that's no problem, no problem. Yeah. You know, you should just keep it. But then, yeah. can you increase the rent? I think everything is going skyrocketing over there, Oregon and 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 Seattle area, Washington. Yeah, so we have increased the rents. Um, we bumped it from like eight hundred to twelve hundred. Um, okay hey yeah. oh my gosh that's a big win 50 percent. Yeah. yeah yeah but things are slowing down now i think it's just the winter but we'll see how it goes um no worries overall we're planning okay. we were wanting to sell it but then you know just because the market buyers are here and sellers are here and, they know, are they are yeah. i know the sellers have not come down their no. expectations right dave you know their expectations haven't come down brother right yeah no at least not not in... yeah. Go ahead, Phil. Go ahead. At least not in the markets that I'm in, right? Like Oregon sure. is not a very wasn't a very hot market for anyone. And then um I'm currently in Virginia, which is near DC, and um the Richmond markets are not very hot markets either, but they're also very stable markets price wise, uh -huh. but uh but they're also like priced at where, you know. Uh, primary markets are, are priced at so got it got it dave yeah brother. well i would just say this um like if if, if you look at what mike's doing uh, i mean so i i went off and i i joined carl allen's business buying um mastermind uh you know why because in businesses you're getting a cap like if you were to use cap rates you're, you're i mean basically you're getting a cap rate in the 30s I mean, it's just mm -hmm. like you buy in businesses that cash flow. But here's the reality with the real estate world. Um, I'm negotiating a 28 unit deal right now in Texas. It's an A property and mm -hmm. it's one, basically it's $10,000 and I take over. Um, that, wow. So wow. That's, creative, that's creative financing and it'll only make me a couple grand a month, but it'll make a couple grand a month. There are deals but you've got you got to be willing to look for the deals. So to say there aren't deals in every market, um, like about according to uh, IRR, um, like fifty eight percent of the country is in hyper supply right now. Mm -hmm. That's where the deals start. I mean, if 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 they're in hyper supply, and and Vinny, I don't know the number, but I, I think it's like two trillion dollars is is bridge loans that are going to come due in 2024 and 2025? Yes. Well, yes. that's where the deals are. Because if I got a bridge loan coming due and I've put my signature on the bottom of that, on that personal guarantee, well, what am I going to do? I'm facing a, a situation where um, we got to get out of this property. And if we put 30% down, guess what's probably, mm -hmm. we're, we're not going to walk out of this closing with probably that 30%. We might walk out with 10%. Um, yeah. So how do you get to the seller? How do you get the seller's expectations? I think it's, um, down. Yeah. You, you just, you, you gotta, you gotta talk to them. Like Mike, what you, what you did, you said, look, I'll, I'll take over your debt for 18 months. I'll take over this property for 18 months, but if I'm not going to make money, I'm not giving you the money you want. 
And so that's negotiating. That's just negotiating 101. And Mike, I love that you said that. Was that mm -hmm. 74 units or 78? Huh? The, the, the seller financing deal? Yep. That it was 96 mm -hmm. units. 96. 96. <laughs> 96 I mean, that's units. phenomenal. And so those deals are there. He took over payments. It, yeah. It's easier to convince an owner with 96 units. I say convince. He is he or she is convinced already. If they yeah. got a bad deal, they're convinced already. You don't have to convince them. You come to them with numbers that make sense for both of you because they realize it's got to make sense for you. That's where yeah. that's where being creative in this market comes in. I mean, none of us walk in the room and have Vinny's reputation. Boy, if we did. Um, but, you know, the, the flip side of that is, you know, you walk in the room and you listen to what the seller is saying. And in many cases, the seller will lay out the entire roadmap of how they want to exit. And if so true, if you understand their roadmap and and you kind of insert yourself in there to say, hey, OK, here's my roadmap. I can't get into this deal if I can't make money. And so how do you propose I make money on this deal? You're trying to sell out a five cap. OK, um, I'm borrowing money at seven, let's say at seven percent. Maybe the end of this month, they'll drop it to six. But I can't make money at seven percent interest. How do you propose I make money? You've got 35 percent equity. You might have an assumable at three, three and a half percent, but it's that equity piece is the problem right now. So how do you propose and let them come up with the make the deal work? So, you know, there, there, I see positives. Uh, I think of Encore, he's not on the call, but um, yeah, Encore probably analyzed. I've never seen anybody analyze more deals in a single year. Um, so true. And again, I, so true. He's just crazy, man. Uh, but <laughs> out of all the deals he did, he was analyzing them in 2021. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, 2022, which is Two. a yeah. year because the cap rates were so compressed. Everybody's making money. But 2021 and 2022 were probably the highest. Wouldn't you say the highest price, lowest cap? Many you didn't buy a deal in 2020, yeah. right? 2023 zero, 2021 one, no, no, 2022 one, 2020. Uh, okay, 23 zero, 22 one, 21 one. <laughs> so you know, four years only two deals, and then before that zero, then two. I mean, and how many sellers? It's crazy this year. I mean, you're probably <laughs> looking at deals regularly, though. But you were selling <laughs> deals, right, Vinny? Yeah, I was selling. I sold so many deals at the peak. I'm selling Knoxville, which I bought in 21. I'm selling now in 24. Well, it should have closed in December 2023 within two, two and a half years, but it'll close hopefully next month. So that is, uh, no, you're right. The key thing also is that. We got to be in the game to play the ball, to play the game. You got to be in the game. You cannot be spectator, spectator <laughs> is the word. But let's talk about some other wins. Uh, let's just say Miguel. Hey, brother, Miguel, right there. Miguel met me at the Millionaires Summit. I've been really impressed and he bought the course and everything, not through school, but my other platform. M uh, Miguel, can we see you? He's a young man. Uh, just 22 years of age. Is that right, Miguel? I don't know. No, Is your camera working? I just yeah. turned 20 in January 14th. Okay, <laughs> January 14th, 21. Are you 21? No, 20, 20. I, just, I was 19. 20, I was 20, brother. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I gave you one year <laughs> more. Okay, 20. Tell me what your experience and what you are doing right now after you got into this whole business of multifamily you've been doing single family wholesaling for like how many years tell us a little no, bit about you i i never did uh wholesaling i was in oh. property management um that's okay. my cup of tea and okay. now ever since i met you Vinny, at the millionaire summit i've been underwriting uh bigger multifamily deals such as 30 60 70 units um, mm -hmm. I was scared into jumping into the bigger deals because I was so used to being um, in the small multifamily space and Vinny just changed something in my brain and told me to stop being scared and jump into it. <laughs> yes. So now I'm underwriting. Yes. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. You said you put some LOIs. Uh, did did they come through? No, or I, I all still of them, huh? all of them uh fell through. Um, one I was okay. gonna get. One I was gonna get, but the seller didn't come into term with me. Okay. Um, yeah. I got him. He wanted three point nine. I got him down to three point six. Um, but I the see. deal had to work at three point four. Um, Ooh. so. He didn't want to accept a couple of hundred thousand. Yeah. You know, if it's not sold, keep at it, right? You know, yeah, keep exactly. at it because I'm gonna follow up. You know, huh? Follow up, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. By the way, you know, Miguel, brother Miguel lives in Orlando. Oh no, Tampa, right? Massachusetts. Oh, best. Hold on. See, <laughs> my <laughs> mind is. Uh, it's very close, right? Tampa. No, it's yeah. Massachusetts is way up on the top. <laughs> uh, hey, Miguel, uh, never, never be afraid to ask a seller if you're on a three point six million dollar deal. You're two hundred thousand dollars apart. Say, okay, I'll give you the two hundred thousand dollars. How about you? You just hold a note for twenty four months, and I'll pay you two hundred twenty five thousand in twenty four yeah. months on the property. Just ask. Yeah. It never hurts to ask. Hey, if we're two hundred thousand apart, okay, I'll come to the table, but I'm not going to give it to you today. Let's put it on two years from now with a due on sale, but I'll pay you two twenty five in two years. Okay. I love it, love it, love it. Creatively. It's free money, and it's 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 fake money. I mean, if you're going to raise the <laughs> rent, it's going to cover that. It's it's not. You know, I don't want to say it's fake money, but it's no. Um, when you're borrowing money, it's fake money. It's I mean. Yeah. You're creating no, I, I, out of out of debt, and that's so true, so true. Equity through, I mean, the valuation of the property uh, with your business plan, Miguel, right, brother? You're going to be able to decrease expenses. You'll be able to increase the rent. Hopefully, you're buying this property because market rents are higher than the current rents, and then yeah. there are some rub system, you know, ratio utilities build back system where you uh -huh. are charged, go to charge the residents if they are paying, you know, only 30% of the utilities and the owner is paying 100%, of course, to the water, gas, electric, what, what, and termite and all that stuff. But you come back here, you increase that rub to a higher level to maybe 85%. You get other incomes to add into the deal that every single thing is going to increase NOI, net operating income. And with the cap rate, that increases the value of the property. That increases your equity. If your loan is constant and the value of the property increases, guess what? Equity increases, brother. So uh -huh. that 200, what Dave is saying is so right. It's so minuscule, actually, in my thinking, you know, don't let the deal go. Uh, you know, I, I would like to, yeah, go ahead, brother. My, yeah, I was yeah. going to say the other thing, what Dave said is hundred percent, right. Um, the other thing I've done is I've offered a, a lower cash value or give them equity in the property. And here's ah. why I offer equity because I'll, mm -hmm. I'll show them my underwriting. Here's where we're going to take the property. Here's what your equity is going to be worth, but here's the ninja trick of why they, why you do that. For them to not take it, they have to unsell you on the value of the property. Well, they're trying to sell you the property. They don't want to do that. They, they don't want to tell you why the property won't be worth that because they're essentially telling you why not to buy it. So if yeah. you give them an equity play, they a lot of times will. Uh, we have one that right now that we're doing that. He's holding on for 5% so we can keep his debt. And um, and so uh, in giving him upside. So a lot of times they will take that to offset that. Because if it's a good deal at 3.6 million, 200,000 shouldn't take the deal off the table yeah, um, depending right. on your strategy. But um, unless totally. it's a fix and flip short, short period, that, that might change it. But um, it's, it's a four, yes. four year brilliant. old. You probably will be able to swim past that. That's brilliant. Oh, really very brilliant. Very brilliant. Brad, you, Braden, you. brother. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Miguel. And thank you, Mike. And thank thank you, Mike. you, David, I for adding. Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, what did you say? I was going to say, Brother Braden, you want to share? I know you were sharing in the other, uh, you know, uh, earlier session, your wins. You want to share? Yeah, there you are, brother. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah appreciate the insights on this, Paul. It's really beneficial for what I have going on now. So I submitted an LOI and an offer to a seller with a seller finance. 
He essentially said, I want a million and a half. And my offer was a million based on, you know, what I think the property can do and what it's worth. And so uh -huh. I love what David just said about, because it's funny, he, he looked at my offer and I had, you know, with interest, him holding a note for like 10 years was 1.2, right? Or 125. And he goes, mm -hmm. we're 250,000 off, man. Uh, and I'm like, dude, well, you got to like show me some numbers to show me why this property is worth 1.5. And he, yeah. he says he has an offer from another buyer for one five. I don't know that he really does. And I said, mm. he, I said, look, man, I can offer you two million, but it doesn't mean it's a real offer, right? This is a real offer in your hand. Here's I love it. it. Sure, sure. And you know, that's tack like on, tack on that extra piece. Totally, yeah. totally. It's like, you know, hey, you want to stay for six months, three months, and the buyer walk out at the end, or you want somebody who is really sincere and is going to close, close on the deal, right? I mean, uh, all those kind of buyers are there, but you are genuine, right, Braden? So you can impress upon, maybe, you know, let's see if he'll turn around. But good, good negotiation is the key to any yeah. success. You know, win, win, win. It has to be win, win, huh? You know. I, I want to add to that. So I had. Um, so uh -huh. let's let's look at what you just said there, Braden. I could pay you two million for your property. Here, okay. You you said that. If you say to the seller, I can pay you two million for this property if you'll give me zero percent interest. See, well, that's what I was gonna do. That's what I was gonna do on the one five. So I haven't come back to him yet and said, look, I'll give you your price. I did text him uh -huh. after. I said, look. Oh, I can pay your price, but it's got to be my term. So yeah, they'll carry it zero percent. Yeah, you, know, you can't can have both. You can't have price and terms. So yeah. and that's what you say. I could pay you two million if the interest was zero and my and and the payment was principal only at three thousand dollars a month. You throw something impossible out there, but you mm -hmm. but what you're doing is you say you're wanting a price. I need cash flow. Vinny's in the business <laughs> of cash. We're all in the business of cash flow. <laughs> So how right. can you let me cash flow on this property? If I give you your 1.5, how can I create cash flow? If I give you 6% interest, I can't make a 6% interest payment. So yeah. would you give me, let me pay 3% interest, interest only, like Mike was talking about. What he did is he's making interest only and defer mm -hmm. the interest on the back end. There, yeah. Nothing in real estate is cast in stone. And I said fake money. It's it's really a wrong way to say it. it's not fake money. It's real money <laughs> because yeah. money is created. I mean, when you yeah. when you create debt, you create money because there's almost always equity with the debt. And it's all the payment structure, like what Vinny said earlier, it all boils down to the the NOI. And and yeah. when you stress to the sure. seller, give me the NOI I need so I can sell it to my investors and I'll take yeah. this deal at the price you mm -hmm. want. We just have to defer, either defer interest or I'll pay mm -hmm. you a higher price and I'm going to make very low interest payments to you um, so that I can get the cash flow for three or four years, do the things that I'm going to do so that I can exit the property. You get your money. I get my money. Everybody wins. Yeah, I love that. Awesome. 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 I, I just tried to anchor him at a higher price because he said he had an offer at one five, And I said, well, I can offer you $2 million. It doesn't mean it's a real offer, though. I said, here's an yes. offer in your hand, dude. You know? Yeah. It's like, where where is this guy that's supposedly offering you a million and a half, man? You know? Like, How long are you gonna wait? Right. How long are you gonna wait for him to come around? So one of the things I've done when people do that is I'm just like, you know what? If I was you, I'd take that deal. Don't call him back for two weeks. <laughs> You'll find it. out real quick it. if he's got a one point five million dollar offer. Uh, and I'm serious. I've done I do that all the time. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? You if I was in your case, I'd take it. I wish you the best. I'd, I'd walk away. And all of a sudden, that it. pops back up. Oh, the deal fell through. Oh, did it? Yeah. And so, uh, uh, and so, yeah. I because you call I their bluff. That, you call their bluff, right? Mike, take your Mike deal. Go for it. it. I don't. I mean, because also it also puts out the energy. Listen, I don't need your deal, but if this is a good fit, let's let's get a deal done. Um, and I, and I learned more about it. just walking away. Say, okay, go to town. I'll go to the next one. And uh, you know, more I often love that. I, back up. I love what we are talking here. Be straight, be bold, be, you know, I mean, you know, if it's going to make sense, it will make sense, right? But we cannot be timid 
in putting yellow eye and all just be bold and let's see if it's not going to be it's not going to be right you know yeah yeah 100%. no that's fantastic Mike, huh go ahead please Steve. Mike you're all over it you never know if you have a good deal unless you say you know what this isn't going to work I got to go and they go whoa 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 I can I can so Mike's all over it. This have another buyer. Seems like I hear that every every week that we're here. I have another buyer. And Mike yeah. and Dave uh, have really nailed it down. I think I think that's a one-two combination. I think the jab that stuns him, man, I take that deal. Uh, I'll just go for it, man. I'll talk to you later. I won't even say that. Just buy. And then two weeks later, oh, it fell through? Well, you know what? I've been thinking. I've got this creative financing. You know, you want the, this. I want the term. What do you think about this? And now you're coming from a, a place of strength because they know you've already walked away once. Yeah. So, and they know you'll walk away again. So this is really, this out, out of everything that we've talked about in the last year, year and a half, I think today is the strategy of how to negotiate these deals. Because we hear it all the time. I have another buyer. I have another buyer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, last year, year before that, yeah, sure. The prices were overflated and they were, closing before you could even put them on the market but those yeah. days are coming to a quick end if not already done um mm -hmm. and uh this hyper hyper stuff that dave keeps talking about mm -hmm. this is this is real this is see the negotiation is what excites me when we, we bought our new traverse it was it was a walk away always a walk away when you buy a new car <laughs> you always walk away you know like hold on i heard when you want to buy the car go at the end of the month you get I, better last, deals because yeah, the they want to hit the quota, uh, you know, the budget. <laughs> and and December is the best because they're all trying. Oh, so, December. Yeah, December is mm. the best. You go to the end of the month of December, they will give you everything because they're trying. To, the owner's got double holdback, and they're wanting to they're wanting to hit their numbers, so they'll give everything away. But you got to like, I I came down eight thousand dollars and two more points off of whatever interest they were wanting to 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 do. Because it's like, awesome. eh, you know, this doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't think we can do this, honey. We knew the good cop, bad cop, right? She's like, but I really want it. I'm like, yeah, but mm, well, let me see what I can do. You're not doing anything. I already know you know. So <laughs> this is real. This is really good. This is I this love it. Away, love it. Uh, take that yeah. deal is brilliant, and then come back with creative financing. Um, Excellent. Excellent. No, thank you. I would love to also ask Catherine. Catherine is from West Palm, Florida. We got David Mulvaney right here, the king over there, Jacksonville side right there. So Florida, we got uh, Catherine, you want to add something if you would like to? Okay, maybe, maybe Catherine is uh, just listening in. She was, she joined me at three o'clock from three to four session also. Alrighty, you know, I asked Steve to talk about vending business. So he's gonna share with us his PowerPoint. He's looking into starting this business and love to find out brother Steve, so go for it. I know my very good friend, he passed away now, but his family, they made a lot of money, good money in vending business, a lot of good money, you know? So I'm, I'm really, excited to kind of go through your PowerPoint, you bet. Yeah, let me, uh... here we go. So uh -huh, I'll just that's breeze beautiful. through this pretty uh -huh. fast. Um, so the company that we're going with is natural to go and uh, you'll find out real quick why. So remember this is, go go check all your, your attorneys or everybody. This is only for uh, entertainment purposes. Okay, so our goal is investing is to increase your passive income, increase your net worth, achieve financial independence so that you can stop working. These are for the people that are going to want to invest with us, our, our investors. Mm -hmm. Increase your streams of positive cash flow and start living the life you want to dream. So an example of a 40 mile, I just go right into it. I just give them sure. the partner invest sure. $170,000 and they're paid back in 48 months. 12 machines average $7,000 per year. That monthly payments of $4,731 includes a 15% interest. So I'm going to pay you back 15%. 14275 paid to the partner and in interest as that comes to $14,000 in a year that you're going to get back. An additional 20% return on the net profit of each machine. 
Estimated additional profits of a machine is around 9,700 uh, a year. So total profits for you would be another $24,000 with 12 mm -hmm. machines. My goal is to get 50 and then sell it back. But let's just, with, at, 90, at 48, mm -hmm. that's $95,000 a year in your pocket. So mm -hmm. not too shabby uh, for $170,000. Partners, this is this is what's going to happen after six months, though, if, if, if you want. You're going to go ahead and be able to buy me out. Take over all the payments, uh, the machines, expenses, everything. You get It says two years, but I put it down to one year. Uh, you projected net average income per machine. Uh, you can be bought out after six months. The revenue has received. So what we're going to do to figure out this is not take the lowest producing machine, nor the highest producing machine. We're gonna go ahead and look at each machine at six months of what they're producing and average all of them out. So there's not gonna be any funny money there for you. Uh, you're gonna get, uh, I get a 5% a, a retainer to be your consultant for two years uh, because there's gonna be problems. There'll be an employee that I've already put in position. They'll be there for six months. They know what to do. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. So, but if, you need another employee or something's not working. I've been doing business consulting for 30 years. You're not gonna hit me with anything I don't know. Uh, an example of buyouts, kind of went over this, but you take over everything. Um, for, oh, if you don't wanna buy it out, this is what this is, sorry. If you wanna, wanna buy it out, I'll find somebody else and they'll pay you the money that we were talking about. So you'll get prepaid and uh, they'll take over the business. Uh, is my goal is to get in and out, in and out. This actually, David, uh, actually got me on on thinking about this. Build a business and sell it. Build a business and sell it, mm -hmm. which is is super super lucrative. Um, so this is the really cool thing. In a respectable location, a vending machine can make anywhere from ten dollars to fifty dollars a day. This equals three hundred to fifteen hundred dollars a month. It's not unusual for a vending machine to produce a lot more than this in excellent settings. The location of any machine affects elements like traffic, consumer incomes. So you should expect above average vending machine revenue if you have a great location and a great product. I'm only going in two locations right now, McKinney, Texas and Frisco, Texas, which happen to be two out of the five top 10 cities in the United States. Universal they are, Studios oh yeah, in Frisco. And yes, Frisco, yes. Uh, and so, uh, this company uh, guarantees they'll get 100 units bought at least a week. And that's uh, and what I've done in the, the projections is I've got right around $400. I've lowballed the amount of money that could be bought on this. It's as if every machine was terrible in a terrible location, uh, this, is, this is what you could get. Mm. So global industry analysis. It says the vending machine market size was $21.3 billion in 2020. This is tr prior to the uh, COVID, uh, which was caused actually a demand for countless retail systems to spike. So COVID actually helped the vending machine business. Yes. Because people didn't yes. have to do anything, right? So we're COVID mm -hmm. proof. We'd never happen mm -hmm. again, in my opinion, but we are. So uh, a pretty bold uh, prediction is the size of the vending machine will be $51.9 billion uh, coming wow. up. So it's growing. Now, everybody uh, can remember, I mean, I go to antique stores all the time. And mm -hmm. I've, I'm getting ready to redo this thing because I can see vending machines from way back when, when you got the Coca-Cola pop the glass bottles and everything. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. they're out there. They, the vending machines are not going away. So uh, there's a 5.5 uh, increase mm. in the CAGR uh, through 2027. So even a conservative stuff, this is this is crazy good news. And there are also moments of the game where... Go ahead. Oh. No, go ahead. What'd you say? There's also moments oh. in the game... Oh, that no, there was something. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah. So, no problem. Uh, expectations, um, $31 billion by 2027, basically. Uh, it's just it's just going to keep going. Uh, more companies are using vending machines as values for their employees and customers, and this trend is increasing. The returns have been spectacular over the last 40 years. The company that I'm uh, going in have been around for 30. 
People are more impulsive and unwilling to wait. We see it all the time. Got to have it now, now, now. You spend two seconds waiting for the, the light going, going from red to green. You get honked at mm -hmm. if you're not going. So people are just, it's there. There's a pent up demand for getting these things quick and the trend is growing. Companies use the convenience of vending machines to entice their employees to work for them. So they don't have to go across the street or anywhere. They can just go. Some yeah. of the vending machines have candy. Some of them have perishables, which people think, oh my gosh. But if you put them in the mm -hmm. right place, you don't, it works. Uh, mm -hmm. Quite a few of the markets are emerging due to the increase of jobs in certain lo uh, local markets. How often do people use vending machines? Well, every day, 100 million people in the United States use vending machines. Given that there are 7 million wow. vending machines in the nation, the typical machine sees 14 customers every day. Remember, they're guaranteeing me 100 a week. 14 a day mm -hmm. pretty much hits that right on the market. So what they're advertising and what, what this is saying is exactly the same thing. Uh, naturally, more people use the vending machines in busy regions. That's why we're only staying in the busy regions right now. The most frequently mm -hmm. used vending machines provide snacks and beverages. The, park, uh, the market is made up of snacks, drinks. It's 72% of, of mm -hmm. that. Now, I'm going to go, I'm going to go past this because it's, right. it's not relevant uh -huh. for, I mean, we all, we all know vending machines are great. So who's sure. our competition? That's, that's the important thing. So there are 17,273 enterprises out there that operate vending machines. 17,000 oh, in the wow. United States. <laughs> There's no wow. competition. Florida has the biggest. They've got 19, mm. 19,000, mm -hmm. almost 2,000 operators. Texas, 16,000. There's virtually no competition here. California, 14. According to the vending market, 2020 state of industry report the small independent owners control 67 percent of the vending market the small mm. owners i want you to remember that 67 percent small owners are under 10 machines they own less than 10 machines medium 16.5 percent large 7.1 and extra large 9.4 1 million annual revenue for these people that's that's it 4.9 9.9, 10 million. We're going to be right here in the large and extra large. We're with me building and selling, building and selling. It's going to be a, a wonderful, wonderful deal. This is a great thing. Where? High concentration of potential areas. Wait, shopping centers, bus, train stops, sizable apartment buildings, uh, businesses that employ a significant number of people like factories, airports. I mean, when's the last time you didn't go through an airport and see like, 50 machines as soon as you walked in almost. It's just there, there, there. And they're, they're making money hand over. I get the water all the time from those places. Um, colleges, offices, schools, hotels. Nice thing about hotels, if it's a, if it's a three story hotel, that's three machines. Yes, yes. The right. reason that's important is when I hire someone to go out there and I've got 10 machines and I've got three hotels, that's only three stops. Yep. It takes about mm -hmm. an hour. 30 minutes to get there, 15 minutes to do the machine, 30 minutes. To, so hour, hour and a half. But now they're in a place with, so we, we start stacking them. Hospitals, uh, like I said, we could go, hospitals could have, we could be selling bear, everything, right? Or another nice thing is hospitals have a very bad reputation for their cafeteria. So that's where you can start mm -hmm. putting in the food. The thing with schools is uh, ki some kids like to eat healthy, some kids don't. So uh, one of the people that I was talking to when I was, when I was, when I was looking at this company, um, they were in a, a location and Coke was selling more than Pepsi. So they had four things of uh, uh, two Cokes and two Pepsis and they just took out the Pepsis. And while we were there, somebody complained about that and said, hey, I like Pepsi, says nobody's buying. But I'll put it in here and I'll put one in and three Cokes. And if you guys are buy, if they buy it, we'll do it. Well, guess what? They started buying it. So now he's got six stalls, three Pepsi's, three Cokes. So there's a, there's a really, you gotta, gotta look at your customers. So our product will, will be doing appropriate for the area. So if, if it's a factory and most of the people need lunch and little snacks, mm. that's what we'll be mm -hmm. giving. If, if it's, a, like I said, a hospital, a school, if it's an airport, wherever, whatever it is. Uh, I know there's a Walmart right now, our Walmart right there with three miles away from me, 
all the vending machines were gone. That's only two reasons for that to happen. One, they weren't selling, which means they had the wrong stuff in the in there. Or two, um, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. So Vinny brought up a point that, um, am I buying used ones? And the answer mm -hmm. is no. And the reason is, is this company doesn't make money if I don't buy machines. They give us all the support. They go out to the city for, they send a guy out for two weeks to find 60 locations. Now I'm gonna get 12 to 24 vending machines, 60 locations. Mm -hmm. And all I got to do is go in there and say, hey, my guy came in. Do you still want the mini machine? Yes. Okay, let's put them in. There's no rent. There's no electricity. There's no hmm. Wi-Fi charges. The only, only charges that we have to do is you have to go to the city and get a permit. $100 uh, every six months or a year, depending on the city. So it is, it is rent-free. Uh, except mm -hmm. for schools. Schools like the little donation, but that's tax-free. <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a donation, right? Okay, yeah, I'm going to give to this. I'm going to give... So, so you can, you can make these little deals there, but most of the time it's, it's a convenient, the way it's sold is it, this is going to help your business if you have a vending mm -hmm. machine in here. So they really, they really like it. So, it, and they put, they install the vending machines. The first one is on them. Uh, so there's literally no work of, uh, I have to go to school for 10 days to understand how the vending machines work. If it breaks, what to do. I told them, Hey, I'm not a handyman. They said it's a screwdriver and you just take a pair and put a piece in. It's very low tech. And if you can't mm. figure it out, you can call us. We got a helpline that will walk you through it or send somebody out if we really have to. So it's really great business. Um, they are healthy. This is what they, they, they promote healthy. It's, it's a new thing out there. Most vending machines aren't doing it, but they have, they have taken it. They, they know that the health industry is coming and they're going that way. That doesn't mean we can't sell M&Ms. Matter of fact, I can rewrap every one of them TMV vending if I want. It's my machine. But some of them will be healthy. Some of them won't be. It just depends on the location. Uh, but this positive trend has increased the percentage of healthy food selections in vending machines from 20% to 80%, decreasing calorie, salt, fat intake. Uh, if you haven't read, <laughs> let's go off the line here. If you haven't read Younger Next Year, you really should. Mm. Uh, the, the, this is, this is, yeah. I mean, I've, yeah. I've got the book right here. Um, yeah. But, uh, uh, but the health is there, right? It's, it's all about health, but we can go both ways. What is the success rate of vending machines? This is crazy. 80%. Everybody knows that uh, uh, entrepreneurs after two years, 60% are gone. What people don't know is that 10 years, 99% are gone. Vending machine business, 80% business success rate. This is crazy. The profit calculator estimates it'll take 12 months to 18 months to achieve 100% return on investment. 100% return on your investment in 12 to 18 months. That's pure profit after that. Pure wow. profit. Wow, wow. So this is this is why I'm buying and selling. It's, it's, it's pure profit. Um, it's convenient. It's available to almost everyone. And it's something we do because we care. Um, it takes cash and credit cards, so it, everybody can do it. We only sell it in the high traffic areas. If the location is not performing, we'll move them fast because I want the, I want a good location. And you know we'll make mistakes, but that's why we're doing twelve to twenty four. If I've got three or four vending machines that aren't, it's just like rent. They're not paying rent. Okay, well, <laughs> kick those out. And get new renters. Well, kick that out. Get another location. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I see. quarterly cash flow. Investors' money is returned within four years or less. I guarantee you it'll be less because I want to sell this business in six months. Um, and so you'll get your money back one way or the other. Uh, and like so I said, it's are you we thinking do because we care. to do, uh, Stephen, are you thinking to do like a syndication so that investors can bring 50,000, 100 also, or you're just needing 175 or 172? I'm just want one, I just want one investor right there yeah. your investor i'm giving you interest so it's not really syndication plus i'm giving you yeah. the net profit is kind of but uh i talked to david about this and he was like nah sure just just go you, you got you got oh an yeah investor. and so just make it really you know? simple yeah. and 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 that's that um pretty mm -hmm. much it credit investor if you want sophisticated investor when is the time to start now is the best time that's it I like it. I like the colorfulness, everything. So maybe some other people have questions too. Let's come uh, 
come back. So, also, in other words, not only questions, uh-huh. Vinny, but I would love you to pick apart. I mean, I went through it pretty quick. I, if I was talking with an sure. investor, I'd slow it down and and everything. But um, I would love for you guys to pick it apart. Yeah, or, yeah. Or no, any it's helpful it. hints. I, you know. Totally, totally. So what? Uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, take up the screen share. Let's see. Uh, okay, there we are. We are. Any questions? Any questions on it? I know some people had to leave. I know Sada just texted and then Mike had to go also. I know, you know, something we are trying to do now also is to do very impact coaching mastermind for one hour so that, you know, we could, uh, if we, we have more stuff to do, no problem. We could go longer than that. But I think, you know, keeping it short, simple like that. Dave, you already helped uh, Stephen do some uh, talking back and forth, it looks like, right? It was yeah. a big help. Yeah, I think that I think the reality is um, the opportunity is, is strong. I think, Stephen, what um, where you're going to like where if any of your investors are going to look at this and, and they're going to say, OK, be careful of the word guarantee. Um, yeah, that, yeah, you told me about that's that. the thing. Yeah. That's a, that's a bad word with uh, um, investors because that's where you get. Yes. Um, so the investor's question is, what happens if the machine doesn't produce? You answered those like, hey, we're mm-hmm. going to move it. And and so that's mm-hmm. a, it's a good answer. Um, the, it's, a, it's, it's not a glamorous business, but it is a business that produces cash flow. So I think you need to, uh, like, if I'm looking at this from the outside, I look at it like, okay, how do you make sure you don't get stolen from all of those things? Mm. Electronic machines. Vandalism, stolen. I was just thinking and, the same thing. You yeah. Know? And servicing and making sure they're full and packed. And, you know, what happens if the, uh, yeah, you're right. You know, and frequency. So it's a lot more labor intensive. I, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know. A little uh, bit, but not a lot. I don't think, Vinny. Okay, when you think of not. like, Versus, okay, what is, just like with any business, like real estate, multifamily, uh, commercial, it's it's all about the net operating income. Yeah. You're buying machines that sell a product. Those the beauty of the business. This is where I see the beauty of the business you're talking about, Stephen. Is is this? You your your employees are not selling the product it's like in vinny if he's got a if he's got a um you know assisted living facility and he's got 88 mm-hmm. employees mm-hmm. well those people are technically they're they're servicing your customer whereas in your business you're creating cash flow from objects doesn't matter if it's pen yeah. pen candy or lettuce it doesn't matter i don't think you'll sell actual lettuce in your machines but um, if anybody <laughs> buys lettuce, I mean that'd be cool. But the the point is, your your employees are not selling. Your employees yeah. are servicing and making sure. And that's I think that's a big point. You want to say that this is cash flow with um, like Mike brought it up earlier. The problem you see today is oh. employees can't get employees. I can't get employees. I can't get employees. That's what companies talk about. I got a friend here in Jacksonville. He's he has the upscale seafood restaurants, five of them. And he said, the heck with it. He couldn't get dishwashers. So he said, I'm done with it. I, I pay $35 for 35 an hour for a dishwasher. Mm-hmm. He does not have problem getting dishwashers now. And guess what? He said, now I don't have felons in my kitchen anymore. Unless they're the chef. That's what he said. He goes, unless they're the chef. But uh, he goes, I don't have I don't have felons in my kitchen because I have people lining up to wash my dishes. The point is, when you're profitable, every job makes sense, and that's yeah. Like you want to stress the fact that this doesn't take labor. I, I think it's mm-hmm. a it's a add that to your presentation. Okay. Any part of your presentation that you said skip this slide, delete the slide. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. because if you decided to skip it, it's of no value to the, the shorter you can make that slide deck, uh, <clears throat> is, you know, so. Yeah. Makes I was sense. looking at Makes it going sense. thinking, yeah, yeah, I could cut that. I could cut this. I actually sure. need to, actually, I think at the end, 
I think a best close at the end was one hundred seventy thousand dollars gets you X amount of dollars. Yeah, and, and I think so. Them. I think. Thank you. Yeah. No, I think that was good. I know you covered that right away. I didn't really know what the product was, but then you went into the whole, I think the whole hype about, I think I like the statistics. That's great. But maybe consolidating because sometimes, you know, it's like the interest goes up and down, up and down. And by the time it's very long, then you get into confusion, you know? Huh? Yeah. 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 But thanks for sharing. Yeah, yes. No problem. And by the way, David, um, I do have that part. Uh, what we do is we overpay, just like what you're, I think we talked about this. If they're making 15, you're going to give them 25 or 30. And the reason they're not going to steal from you is why would you steal? I, first of all, the app says exactly how many quarters and everything that's in there. Uh, why mm -hmm. would you steal $20 from me as, so that I can fire you and go get somebody else? So, And, and customer, uh, customer service, our number one customer is not the people buying it's my employees that are they're working mm -hmm. and so we'll and then we train them how to talk to the managers and the people that they're dealing with so that they are their number one customer so um, so i was thinking then you know i mean maybe there is more uh a format shown this is where the sales will be these are the expenses something like pnl i was thinking yeah because yeah. just throwing the numbers that you will make this 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 my thinking was how how I'm going to get paid and then what's your stake and how much will be the servicing end of it and you as putting the whole deal together just like I'm thinking about ATMs right I've invested yeah. with David Zook you know they say I'm going to get 24 percent or 25 percent per year and the money is coming into the bank account every month literally right so I think you know no very good good job good job Thank you. All right. Thank you, Anybody David. got Thank any you, questions? Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for sharing that. It's a great way to make money. Yeah. We don't endorse, by the way, Dave or I don't endorse anything. I just want to make sure, you know, it was just a presentation. I asked Steve to give because it sounded pretty good, you know. So, all right. Should we sign off and come back next week fully charged? And let's have a great one. Huh? Right on. Please, everybody right. enjoy. Oh, so I want to say God this, man. You. You're going to Please. Patagonia next a week from Friday, right? A uh, week from this Friday. So next Wednesday, I'll be holding it. Yes, yeah, yes so, seminar. So Patagonia is uh, southern Argentina, right? It is. It is. Chile you know, our and dollar is like 100 times their dollar. I now. know. I know. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. One dollar is 1,000 Argentinian dollars yeah. but now they pegged it they pegged it at 650 but in the market we're gonna get thousand you're gonna buy dollars. some really good argentina wine at dinner and it's gonna cost you a dollar <laughs> <laughs> i'm so, looking forward to it and they say the food is great so we are going to mexico city four nights four nights in argentina's then san diego chile then we take a cruise so it's a pretty nicely yeah, designed for it. Thank you. Thank you. And awesome. we'll see you all next Wednesday. Wednesday. Thank you, David. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you, Vinny Chopra.